On April 14, 2025, Blue Origin launched its 31st New Shepard mission from Launch Site 1 in West Texas. This suborbital flight, lasting approximately 10 minutes and 21 seconds, featured an all-female crew. The mission reached an altitude of 106 kilometers, allowing the crew to experience a few minutes of weightlessness before returning safely to Earth. While Blue Origin's recent missions may generate headlines, especially due to celebrity passengers, these media spectacles often mask a harsher truth that the company remains years behind in the real space race. Founded by Jeff Bezos in 2000, Blue Origin has spent over two decades talking about a future it has barely begun to deliver. In contrast, SpaceX, founded by Musk just two years later in 2002, has already transformed itself into the backbone of global space operations. As of April 2025, SpaceX continues to dominate the launch industry with an astonishing 138 successful orbital launches in 2024 alone, representing over 50% of all global orbital missions that year. In the first three and a half months of 2025, it's already carried out 41 launches, 39 on Falcon 9, and two test flights of its massive Starship rocket. That's an average of one launch every 2.5 days and a cadence unmatched in history. Meanwhile, Blue Origin finally launched its new Glenn rocket in 2025, after nearly a decade of delays. But the long-awaited debut was far from flawless. Originally promised for 2020, the heavy lift rocket's first mission slipped five full years behind schedule. And when it did fly, the results raised more concerns than confidence. While the rocket technically reached space, the upper stage failed to perform as expected. Their suborbital tourism vehicle, New Shepard, while operational, isn't much more than a glorified amusement ride. It has conducted fewer than 25 flights in total, and even that record isn't spotless. In September 2022, a new Shepard booster failed mid-flight during an uncrewed mission, triggering the launch escape system. While no one was hurt, the failure grounded the vehicle for over a year. Blue Origin only resumed launches in late 2023. Compare that to SpaceX's Falcon 9 booster, which has achieved over 300 successful launches and has landed and reused rockets more than 250 times. Some Falcon 9 boosters have flown as many as 20 times, dramatically cutting launch costs and reshaping what's economically feasible in spaceflight. Liftoff occurred from Blue Origin's Launch Site 1 in West Texas. The rocket's engine, fueled by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, ignited with a clean burn, propelling the crew capsule vertically from the pad. The first stage, known as the booster, provided the initial thrust for the climb. Within about two and a half minutes, the capsule separated from the booster at an altitude of roughly 75 kilometers, continuing upward on its own ballistic trajectory. The capsule then coasted to its peak altitude of approximately 105 kilometers, just past the Karman line, the internationally recognized boundary of space. At that point, the passengers experienced about three to four minutes of weightlessness, during which they could float inside the cabin and observe Earth from large panoramic windows. The capsule's interior is pressurized and climate-controlled, but not equipped with any pilot controls, as the entire mission is operated autonomously from the ground. Meanwhile, the booster executed a controlled descent back to Earth. Using its grid fins for aerodynamic stability and its engine for a soft landing burn, the booster touched down vertically on a concrete landing pad located near the launch site. Just before touchdown, retro thrusters at the base of the capsule fired to cushion the landing. The capsule landed gently in the West Texas desert approximately 11 minutes and 20 seconds after launch. The ground recovery team quickly moved in to secure the capsule and assist the crew. Cameras captured Jeff Bezos himself running toward the capsule to greet the crew, but in a moment that instantly went viral, he tripped and fell face-first in the dirt as he circled around the capsule. After laughing it off and regaining his footing, he opened the hatch and welcomed Lauren Sanchez and the rest of the crew back to Earth. This mission was the first human launch for Blue Origin since August 2022.
The company had been forced to pause crude flights after a launch failure in September 2022, where a booster malfunctioned mid-flight during an uncrewed payload mission. Technically, this recent missio was a success. The vehicle performed as expected, the crew experienced microgravity safely, and both the booster and capsule were recovered intact. But from a broader perspective, the flight once again demonstrated the limited capabilities of the New Shepard system. It can't reach orbit, carry cargo, or contribute to space station operations. Each flight is short, expensive, and mostly symbolic, more of a statement than a step forward in space exploration. It was, in essence, another short hop to the Karman line, not an orbital mission. The company has not disclosed the cost per seat, but estimates suggest prices ranging from $150,000 to several million dollars. If Blue Origin wants to be taken seriously in human spaceflight, it's time to stop celebrating 11-minute suborbital hops. The real action and the real money is in low Earth orbit. While other companies are delivering cargo and astronauts to space stations hundreds of kilometers above Earth, Blue Origin's main crew vehicle can't even get close. New Shepard isn't capable of orbital flight. It only reaches an altitude of around 105 kilometers, just past the Karman line, before falling back to Earth. That's far below the International Space Station, which orbits at roughly 420 kilometers. More importantly, New Shepard doesn't reach the speed needed to stay in orbit. A spacecraft needs to hit around 7.8 kilometers per second to remain in orbit, while New Shepard reaches less than one. Without that orbital velocity, it can't circle the Earth, rendezvous with a station, or perform any kind of orbital maneuvering. If Blue Origin wants to move beyond suborbital tourism and play a real role in human spaceflight, now is the time. Meanwhile, a major opportunity just presented itself. Boeing finally launched its first crewed Starliner mission this year after nearly a decade of delays and over $1.5 billion in cost overruns. But what was supposed to be a long-awaited redemption turned into another embarrassment. Shortly after launch, Starliner suffered a series of technical issues. The capsule made it to the International Space Station, but once docked, multiple system failures were reported. Thrusters malfunctioned power systems glitched, and worst of all, NASA confirmed that the crew could not safely return as planned. The astronauts are now stuck on the ISS while engineers work around the clock to figure out how to bring them home safely, most likely using a SpaceX Crew Dragon. This is the moment Blue Origin has been waiting for, whether they know it or not. With Starliner failing and SpaceX carrying nearly the full burden of orbital crew missions, there is a clear and urgent demand for a second trusted provider. NASA can't afford to rely on one company. It needs alternatives. And so far, Blue Origin hasn't even entered the race. If Blue Origin is serious about competing in the orbital market, they need to build something entirely new. They already have the new Glenn rocket, which finally launched this year, but with an underperforming upper stage and no human-rated systems. Still, it's a starting point. Developing a human-rated orbital capsule is expensive, but not impossible, especially for a company with Blue Origin's financial backing. We know exactly how much it takes because NASA has done it before. Through the Commercial Crew Program, NASA awarded SpaceX $2.6 billion in 2014 to develop Crew Dragon, including test flights, safety systems, and operational missions to the International Space Station. Boeing, under the same program, received $4.2 billion to develop Starliner, more money despite delivering significantly less. SpaceX, on the other hand, delivered Crew Dragon within six years of the contract, conducted a flawless uncrewed and crewed test flight, and has since flown more than 50 astronauts to orbit across NASA and private missions. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.